In a world fed to the gills with every permutation of crossover and SUV imaginable, suddenly wagons are cool again. Let's drive BMW's entry and their most accessible version of the art form, the 2014 328D xDrive. And check the tech. Now our 3 Series wagon has dual claims to coolness. One, it's a wagon. That's resurgently hip right now. Two, it's a diesel. Also resurgently hip right now. I'll be honest, I'll be curious to come back and watch this video in five years and see where both of those are in terms of the trend meter. In the meantime, the face of this car is virtually indistinguishable from a 3 Series sedan. It's around the back that things were done really well, I think. BMW brought a very graceful, sporty end to the sentence. And they've also got an interesting dual tailgate of sorts back there. You can lift the whole gate, which by the way is available power for the first time on a three wagon, or you can just lift up the actual glass lid with a cleverly hidden button underneath the base of the wiper stalk. Now inside our 328D is a very basic cabin. This is not loaded up with all the CNET style tech, but a quick glance here shows you familiar BMW DNA. Notice even on a very basic car, you still have this sort of sticking up display on top of the dash, but it doesn't have a lot in it. It's basically your media and phone and contacts display. A few settings in there, connected drive doesn't work, and you've got just basics here in a very nice interface, and you're still using an iDrive controller. Basic iDrive is so basic, it doesn't even have Bluetooth streaming, just Bluetooth calling. Now, we happen to have a sport wheel because we have the M Sport package, so know that this is different. You got some nice paddles here for shifting. Our automatic transmission control is very familiar in BMWs right now. We also have sport seats in this car, which are quite hugging. Again, these are all, along with that rather lofty red line, cues that this is not the old style of diesel that just kind of lugs and tugs all the time. This one's got some sporting pretensions. Great panoramic roof overhead, by the way. For a smallish car, it really covers all rows of occupants very nicely, and you can open up a full half of it to the sky. Now, these BMW 3 wagons come with two 2 liter engines. You can get the 2 liter inline four gas motor, or in this guy, of course, our 2 liter inline four, but it's a diesel. The twin turbo or twin power technology on this car, as BMW calls it, is not a twin scroll turbo, but it's a variable geometry single turbo. A little different than in the gas engine car. Beyond that, of course, it's longitudinally mounted, driving all wheel drive in this case. And you've got the usual direct common rail injection that has really revolutionized diesels lately. Your numbers, 181 one horsepower, but 280 foot-pounds of torque. Welcome to turbo diesel land. The car weighs about 3,800 pounds, but gets up to 60 in about 7.7 .7 seconds. Now, no, that is 1.7 seconds slower than the gas engine car. It's a dramatic difference, but I will tell you, when we get on the road, I'll be able to report to you that diesels feel faster than they print. And your MPG is the ringer. That's the big story here. 31 city, 43 highway for an average of 35 estimate. Now, controlling that engine's output is a fairly simple set of drivetrain controls. Here is the key to the operation, a four-position rocker. All the way up is Sport Plus, and then Sport, Comfort, and then the most interesting to me is Eco Pro, especially in this vehicle. I don't think anybody buys a diesel without having Eco pretty high on their shopping list. Now, all these modes affect engine, transmission, steering, traction control, and in our car, suspension, because we have the optional adaptive underpinnings. The Eco Pro mode, of course, dampens throttle response. Upshifts occur sooner, downshifts later. Air conditioning gets dialed back. And you can set this car to coast to decouple its powertrain when you lift off so it really glides without drag. Even the heating of the mirrors and the seats gets tuned back a little bit to put less load on the engine's alternator and battery. Combine that with brake energy regeneration that's on almost every BMW now, as well as auto start-stop technology up here, and you've got about a 10-point plan to bring down this car's fuel consumption. Now, the last drive control I'll show you in here is actually not in here at all, and that would be any settings for the all-wheel drive. There's nothing to do with it, no controls that change its modes or behavior. It's just in there, and it works. Now, there's no mistaking a diesel for a gas engine in terms of that, that tone of its engine, and that's going to turn some people off. Even when the windows are up, it comes through the base and the firewall of the car. This is a relatively inexpensive car by BMW standards, and so there's less isolation of that than, let's say, in a 5 Series diesel. However, as I mentioned, this car is really only slower on paper. Yes, it is slower in reality, but it doesn't feel slower. When you're behind the wheel, that nice, accessible torque makes the car feel quick, not necessarily fast. There's a subtle difference. 
You've got a decent, in fact, a very good yellow and red line to work with here, so getting onto it and shifting is no longer an absurdity like it was with diesel cars a few years ago. You've got some rev range to work with, and it does make a difference in perkiness. You're not going to miss the manual transmission that you can't get, I don't think. This is a good alert automatic, as BMWs tend to be. And because of the torque, the vehicle doesn't get buried under its upper gears like so many cars do today. You can be in 6th or 7th stomp on it and get something. German diesel wagon with a M Sport kit and adaptive suspension. I like it. Okay, pricing our 3 Series wagon, while it is a small wagon, doesn't necessarily have a small price because to get it seen at style, you know how it is with BMW, you gotta tick off a lot of boxes. We start off at about 44.2 base with destination, but then there's another roughly $16,000 in add-ons that I'd wanna see here to truly give it the old CNET stamp. We're ending up around 60,200. What really matters though is the math around its dieselness. You pay about a $1,500 upcharge, if you will, to have a diesel engine in this versus a two-liter four-cylinder gas engine. Is it worth it? Diesel currently runs about 30 cents a gallon more than gas in the U.S., but the 328D diesel gets about 35 miles per gallon average compared to 26 for the gas car. Let's say you're driving the so-called average 15,000 miles a year. The diesel is going to cost you about $1,670 a year in fuel cost. The 328 gas wagon is going to cost you about $2,070. That's an annual fuel savings of, let's say, about $400 a year, which puts you at close to four years break even on the extra cost of this diesel engine. You've got to like it for more than just its native fuel efficiency, at least as long as prices stay where they are. You've got to like it for its torquey fun.